In this example, I want to show you guys how to construct the inscribed circle to a triangle. So the first thing that we need to do is find the center of the circle, the inscribed circle. Sometimes the inscribed circle is called the in circle. And to do that, we need to think about some properties of the circle. So the circle should be tangent to all three sides, or it needs to be tangent to all three sides of this triangle at the same time. So it's going to be something like around here, right, where I'm waving my mouse. So the property then is if it's tangent, say, here, and it's tangent here, then this point here is a point that is outside the circle, but two tangents to the circle pass through this point. And one of the properties that we hopefully have learned in the book today is that, um, therefore, the, the angle uh, made right here, this angle, is bisected by, so the line that connects the center of the circle to this point must be bisecting this angle, right? So it has to be even on, the angle has to be even on both sides. And then the lengths of these two segments will be the same length as well. So long story short, what we need to do is bisect two of these angles and show, and then find the point where they intersect. That's gonna be the center of our new circle. So remember, we're only allowed to use the compass here. So let's do it. Uh, that was way too big. Um, as usual, we need to put a little auxiliary point here. So I'm still not uh, a master of the GeoGebra, but I'm getting better. So there we go, there's that. Now we need to take the same, sorry, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, right? But put, take the same compass opening and do two swipes, say here. And then we can make a ray, our straight edge with a ray that goes straight through here, right? So. I'm going to make this ray pass through here and here. Okay. And at this point, I like to go through and really just kind of uh, lighten, lighten up here. There we go. Okay. So make these real thin, right? These construction lines real thin, just so that we can see what we're working with. I know this is not the most riveting thing to watch in a video, but you'll be able to see all the steps. So there we go. We've bisected this angle. This I'm just gonna, can I delete it without? No. So. This one I want to hide. Uh, so I need to, yeah, okay. Everything's right in front of me. So I'm gonna hide all these points, leave the construction lines. Okay, um, now very quickly, I'm gonna do this again on another vertex. You can choose either vertex. So I'm gonna choose, say this one and use this to construct another angle bisector. All right. And once you get the hang of this, you can go a little bit faster. So now we need another ray, right? And this is gonna give us exactly the center point of our circle, which that I will definitely label, okay? So I'll go back to my tool where I show and hide certain points. I don't need this point, this point, or this point. And I want to just make these lines very thin. And I'm sure you guys have figured out how to have it make these lines be thin automatically and you're yelling into your screen right now to saying, Justin, what are you doing, my friend? Um, I'm gonna rename this point. Oh, though, whoops. So go back here. Let's call this O because it's the center of our circle. All right, that point we definitely want. Um, the one thing I didn't make much lighter as a construction line was this one. That is a construction line though. So there we go. So now what have I done? Well, we now have the center of the circle. The next thing we need to know is what's the radius of this circle, right? And so the notice that these two angle bisectors cut the side, but they don't 
make a right angle. And we need, we know that the tangents to a circle have to be perpendicular to the radius. And so the next thing we need to do is find a point on any one of these three sides. So you pick your favorite side. We need to construct a point that is um, where, where the, if we drop the line from O to that point, that it would be perpendicular, right? So we need to construct a point, basically a perpendicular line through one of the sides that passes through this point O. So let's keep using the bottom side here. So to set my compass, I'm just going to pick any point down here. Let's make it that one. And then I'm going to go back to the compass and swipe. All right, but I'm going to swipe from here. Notice it goes through J. Now I have another point as well, right? And let me zoom out and move this screen around just so we can see a little more clearly what I'm going to do next. So with my compass still, the next thing I need to do, we know that this O is one of the points, right? So we can just go here, swipe like that, and then make, again, the same radius, but place it at this intersection. So be very careful once you have all these points to choose the correct one. They went through there, right? And we're good because now we can make the ray that passes through the center and through this point. All right, and at this point, once again, before we lose track of too much, hide the construction points. We don't need this point. And what we do need is this point. We can leave that as M, that's fine. And then just, again, lighten up our uh, construction lines. And we are almost done now. Once we have the point where the circle meets the triangle, then we have the radius, right? And so at this point, what all we need to do is take our compass one more time and swipe. So set the set the center at O, the radius at M, and swipe, and this is going to give us an inscribed circle. So this is the last step, other than making this a little pretty by see, we set that at O. Look at that. It looks you can, it looks perfect. It's tangent to all three sides. We found the center by bisecting two angles. We dropped a perpendicular. All the constructions were done with just the compass, right? Just the compass and the ray in, in this case, but you could use the line as opposed to the ray. And let's, uh, let's make this thing really pop. So there's our circle. And let's make this one say blue. Okay. So there we go. There's the construction of an inscribed circle to a given triangle. This will work with any triangle. So you can start with your favorite triangle and try to recreate this. Um, you can do this whole construction on paper with an actual compass if you want. Um, you actually can do it with less of a mess of the tick marks because remember, remember the GeoGebra compass always makes the full circles, right? So um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and please try to recreate this on your own.